Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the March listening log update video. Now I don't have a whole lot of update news to give you guys outside of the albums I'm going to be talking about today, but I will say I only have one album on the docket by um, a viewer request that is uh, going to be talked about in April. So outside of the stuff I'm, I'm going to be listening to out of my own uh, volition, I'm open to suggestions from people. The only stipulation is, um, and I, I guess I didn't make this clear enough any of the times I've talked about it, has to be from this year. has to be an album that, was, that has dropped this year. I've had a couple of people suggest albums that are not from this year, and while I've put them into my kind of wish list and my kind of, I've kept my eyes out for them or I'll keep them in my mind when I'm listening to music that isn't new, uh, I'm mostly taking requests for current albums to be discussed with on this channel or on this uh, show as it were this segment um got 12 albums to talk about though it's a lot to get into let's just let's just cut this jib cut this jib wide open i wish i had someone to toss a watermelon to me so i could just smash first album I checked out this month was Tech Nine's latest album, Planet, and as and if it wasn't clear from my st statements I made during my Worst of the Year video, I'm burnt out on Tech Nine's albums. I feel like he's continuing to just oversaturate himself, and there's a topic about a video I want to make uh, about saturation in music, um, focusing a lot on hip-hop nowadays, while using the past as sort of a springboard to talk about it, um, its negative effects in the modern society, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Tech Nine's Planet is just a very mediocre record. It's very mediocre. It's about on par as the um, the first of the two Collabos albums to drop last year. And I know that there's supposed to be this difference behind the behind the scenes on the Collabos and the solo albums, but they're very comparable and the fact that he's continuing to just release these albums in this facet it's evident especially on this album that there's very little that he has to say right now there's tracks like comfortable where he's literally just shouting out radio DJs that he's that he wants to talk to because they don't give him criticism and that's another issue I have with a lot of this album it's a reoccurrence of text lyrical themes that he's had on previous records where he doesn't want to hear what anybody has to say about his albums unless it's positive. And that just doesn't sound good. It, it sounds very cringy to hear. Um, not as not just speaking as a critic, speaking as someone who wants to know when he's doing something wrong. You know, if you only listen to Yes Men, you don't get that. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself as far as this whole over... It ties into some of the themes I'm going to talk about in the video that I'm making. He doesn't want to grow he wants to keep making music that just doesn't sound that sounds like a lesser version of what he used to be and i guess that's 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 fine if his fans like it if his, if his current fans like it that's great it's going to keep being successful for him as a guy who genuinely likes when tech challenges himself or used to challenge himself I, I would rather hear that Tech 9 and I do, and a lot of those rappers say, if you want the old me, listen to the old me. I do, but that does not excuse or dismiss generic ass sounding hip hop. Um, there's some good ideas on here. I like the fact that he expands upon the disco rap trend that had been occurring a couple years back with Don't, Don't Nobody Want None by creating just an Africa Bambata tribute. That's fucking cool. I liked... Uh, Bright Fall, I thought it was okay. Uh, Red Byers uh, was a was a decent cut. There are decent cuts on here, but there's a lot of shit on here that just does not cut it with me. The la the the song My Fault is just fucking sad. Uh, to to write a song where you're complaining that you can't play your titties anthem anymore is really sad tech. And really, the big the biggest thing that this album says to me as a listener, as a person who digests music, is that Tech 9 is going through possibly a midlife crisis. And I hope that it proves to be successful for him. And it's showing to be, because people are eating this album up, and that's good for him. But as a guy who wants more out of Tech 9, I would like to see him take two years, three years off, just sit, travel the world, spend some time with your family, 
you know, spend some time out of the spotlight and and grow even more as a person, you know, or pursue other passion projects. Try to make the world a, a different place for you, you know, and then come back and drop a fucking ever ready, you know, and again, I'll talk about this in the video where I talk about philosophies of saturation in music, but all in all, I'm underwhelmed by this thing. I think it's got a couple decent cuts, but by all in all, this thing just doesn't fit for me. I give it like a 5 out of 10. I want more from Tech, and I hope in the future he starts providing more consistent quality to his music. <laughs> You know, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Breeders. Last Splash is a childhood record of mine, and it's one of my favorite albums of all time. And I genuinely like a lot of their music um, as a whole. Uh, I think their post-Last Splash albums uh, are a little inconsistent in quality, but they do have some really good moments in there. Um, I thought their 2008 comeback record, Mountain Battles, was incredibly uh, well-crafted. Not as good as Last Splash, but the best that I could hope for from the Breeders in 2008. And this accomplishes the same 10 years later. All Nerve is definitely better than the last Pixies album, if we're cut, if, if we're comparing the two. Um, but I like the, the noisier atmosphere and textures on a lot of these songs. I think the guitar work and, and some of the catchiness on some of these songs um, still strikes that same chord that their uh, better written material does in, the, in a similar vein. Um, I like a lot of the lyric sheet on this thing. I think it's the right amount of quirk and um, interesting lyrical choices that were present on the Golden Age Pixie material and the Golden Age Breeders material. I think this shows that Kim Deal and the, and the band still got it as far as musicians. I think they're really good at still composing their music. It's impressive if only because these guys continue to make consistently really good albums. I didn't think the Breeders could make something this quality, but they have. A lot of the tracks like Skinhead Number 2, uh, Metagoth, even all, like the, the title track All Nerve and Nervous Mary, they do a really good job of doing what s tracks um, like Bone Machine or uh, Broken Face did on uh, Surfer Rosa. They have that kind of nuance that isn't missing from modern Pixies, but has done better here. Um, I give this thing like an 8 out of 10. It was genuinely surprising. I was overall just pleased that I invested time into this album. Right. Speaking of fucking comeback albums, AWK's comeback album came out this month and it was, it's really good. I liked this album a lot. I know there are some friends of mine that didn't like it, some that loved it. Um, I'm more on this camp. I really think a a AWK kind of comes full circle in a few aspects on this record. A lot of these, it ties together a lot of his self-help mantra stuff that he was doing <clears throat> in tandem with his party music, and it brings his whole gimmick of partying um, around into that, and it makes his music make a lot more sense in hindsight. Um, I like the overall message of this thing. Um, I could see people's argument of saying it's a bit preachy, but I don't wholly agree with it. I do think at moments it can get a little um, excessive, but I feel like that's kind of the point of AWK's music. It's very excessive. It's very bombastic. It's supposed to be <clears throat> a bit of a sensory overload to that um, dopamine. It's like, it's like musical dopamine. You know, it's supposed to get you up and going and out the door and, you know, ready to fucking eat a mountain. And I feel like while the production isn't as on point as it is <clears throat> on I Get Wet, I do think it comes close, especially in a lot of aspects. The track Break the Curse with its elongated coda was just so energetic and hype-inducing. You know, the party tracks, party mindset, uh, party never dies. Those do a good job of getting you amped. The devil on your side, while again, treading that kind of pseudo preachy territory do do a good job of getting just energized and I think that this accomplishes a lot of what AWK's music used to do in a better way than his follow-ups to I Get Wet did in their initial release. I don't think it's as 
insane as his post close calls the brick walls work, but I like that it's it's pulled back a little bit. I like that this shows a return to form of Andrew WK just being this man on the forefront of party music while having a huge dose of optimism behind that as well. And I give this thing like an 8 out of 10. Not as surprising that I love this as much as the New Breeders, but it is still a welcome, uh, good album in a year that's been really a huge mixed bag so far. <laughs> This was the first requested album, and it is the debut album by the Finnish, Swedish, European metal band Extremities, Gaia. I didn't know what to expect going into this thing, but I will say, as the record got on, I got less and less impressed with these guys' sound. I thought it was interesting um, upon first listen. I thought it, not many bands channel Gojira and their influences, and I liked that they did that, but I will say... This kind of made me just want to listen to the other bands that they're influenced by. Um, I don't think it's a bad time, but I will say there were a lot of songs, especially in the tail end, that were a lot more just cock rocky, and I had no interest in them. Um, I do think that one of the things that I feel like they could do better is cut their song structure a little bit. Uh, condense things down. I felt like especially the last two songs are just a little too long. Uh, they didn't leave me much to be desired. <clears throat> Not that I think progressive music is bad. I think you guys know that. I love progressive music, especially if you've seen me on Crash's live streams. But I do feel like it takes a certain type of songwriting ability to do these long songs. And I think it's ambitious to do it on your first bout, but I do feel like you have to work your way up to that. Um, some do it out the gate, you know, um, King Crimson, somehow they pulled it off. Uh, Gojira to an extent did it. Some metal bands can do it on the first go, but it's, it's a rarity. Um, I do like, again, some of these guys' song ideas, and I like some of their instrumentation, and I like that they channel some of these bands that, um, I enjoy in the metal community, but they kind of uh, wore their influences a little too much on their sleeve. And I mean, everybody's guilty of it on their first go around. I've done it on some of my first albums, some of my first EPs. You can really hear some of the artists that I'm influenced by. And the best thing I can say to do is the more that you make music, the more that you kind of find your own sound and you kind of hone it and you take your influences and you spin them into your own style. Um, <clears throat> I think these guys have a future. I think these guys have potential to make better records than this. Um, but I do think as a first album, it is what I would consider a typical first album by a band. Um, but I do think it's good. I do think I did enjoy my time with it. It was just a little average to me. Um, I give this thing like a 6 out of 10. It's Again, it's not horrible, but I do think these... And I, but I do see a lot of potential in these guys, but I think it is a little... Um, underwhelming in some aspects, given some of the soundscapes they decided to toy with and some of the 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 musical ideas they decide to explore. Thank you for the request, though. This is another request. Um, Lil Yachty's Lil Boat 2. It's no secret, maybe, that I'm not the biggest Lil Yachty fan. Um, I think his simplistic way of rapping is not something that uh, intrigues me. I, I think he's got some good production, even on Lil Boat 2. I think there's some instrumentals that really caught my ear. But by the by, he doesn't do a whole lot for me. Um, but I do recognize that he is not for me. I recognize that he is not my demographic you know um i will say even even if that's the case there are some songs on here that i just do not like uh boom not a big fan of that got money bros wasn't really a big fan of that there there's there's a lot of songs on here that just are way too simplistic even for the genres that he's affiliated with um i listened to culture last year i didn't give it as high i gave it a higher rating than this but I also didn't give it huge accolades because it's just not my thing. I think 
that Lil Yachty... I get why Lil Yachty has an audience, and I get why people like his stuff. It's just not the type of stuff that I listen to. It's not my cup of tea. Um, I, but again, I do like some of the instrumentals, like Whole Lotta Wap. It's got a great instrumental. Um, FWM, a lot of the tail end of the, the, the tape, has some really good instrumental work. Some of the more digital, almost chiptune sounding instrumentals, less of the, the atypical trap stuff, uh, is more my flair. Uh, but the guy that requested this knew I wasn't going to be the... the, the most enthusiastic to talk about it um yeah i mean again i it's it's a little too it's a little too base like i i guess that's that's where the the giving a full perspective comes into play and i'll admit some of his some of his lyrical work or some of his flow work has gotten better on this than his previous albums i think he has a better job of making his his stuff sound a little more engaging um, and I think some of the instrumentals he decides to hop on suit his personality more, but I do think it's just a different world. It's just a different world. With that in mind, I give this thing a 4 out of 10. Um, not the worst thing I've heard this year, and I'm giving it a 4 knowing that there are better in the genre, but this is also not my cup of tea. So this wasn't requested in a sense. I mean, it was, but not completely. I got into this Discord with a Logic fan um, on Twitter, someone that watches the channel as well. We, you know, we used to work together, and same thing, same issues I have with Tech Nine bleed into Logic's career a little bit. I was following Logic back in college, and I think he has like Tech oversaturated himself a little bit. I think it's interesting that he has done what a lot of um, his influences or a lot of his predecessors did and create a dichotomy between mixtape logic and album logic. But I don't think the line is as blurred as people want to make it to be because on his albums, he has hype tracks. On his EPs or on his mixtapes, he has philosophical tracks. They're just not as the saturation of that style. It's just different on an album and a mixtape. But it's the same guy. I think there are songs on here that I enjoy. I will say I like that it's not as preachy about the whole biracial thing as everybody got. I, I, I think some of the hype tracks work. Um, but I also think that this is just uh, as milk toast as everybody is. Only it's a little worse because... He decides to make the hype tracks in his mixtapes, and I'm a little sick of Logic's hype tracks. Um, they are better than they were on the first Bobby Tarantino, because some of the hooks on that mixtape were utter crap. Um, I think, even if I don't like Indica Badu, I think the hook on that's better. Um, I think Every Day has a good hook, even if I think the song is kind of mediocre. Uh, and I think that Boom Bat Protocol has a really good sound to it. I mean, there's, there's good songs on here, but tracks like Wizard of Oz, just keep it off the mixtapes, Logic. It, it makes your stuff a little more inconsistent if you have this, if you present this dichotomy of mixtape Logic and album Logic, and you blur those lines, you know? I get that you're the same artist, but if you're gonna present this Jekyll and Hyde sort of personality, like you do on the, on the Rick and Morty intro, which I can get, keep it or lose it, I don't really care. Um, but if you present this dichotomy, show that dichotomy. Have your albums more socially conscious or strictly socially conscious. Have your mixtapes strictly hype beast machines. Um, that might make your music a little more compelling, if I'm being honest. I think some of the features are okay. I don't care about 2 Chains, Wiz Khalifa's whatever. Big Sean was a kind of impressive. I was kind of impressed with Big Sean's contributions here. He didn't really sound like Big Sean. It was a little weird, but... And 44 more is that typical bars thing that Logic does. Um, and then this thing is like a 5 out of 10. Kind of mediocre. Uh, like Tech, I feel like Logic just needs to take a break. He's young. He should take three, two, three years off, travel, uh, invest in a new business, do something new, come back, tell us about it. You know, don't just live in the now and continue to write in the now. Grow and reflect. That's my biggest advice for Logic. And 
this was also a kind of request. The new Against All Logic album 2012 through 2017 was requested by my one of my other buddies that I work with now. Uh, he was kind of throwing these um, introducing vibes in my brain. And while I didn't get those upon listen, I will say I like this thing a lot. I think that it reminds me more of the avalanches. Um, I like that it kind of has this electronic atmosphere that keeps me amped and keeps me going. Um, I can hear a little bit of a LCD sound system influence and some of the percussion work and some of the atmosphere work that they can they concoct. I think the sampling work on this thing is fucking amazing. Um, this thing kind of reminds me of like a mid-90s dance album, but with a little more thought put into it that's done with electronic music nowadays. Some of the... Some of the some of the vocal works that they have in these hooks, how they spin them into these hooks, are um, brilliantly put together. Uh, the the final track, Rave On You, doesn't feel like a 10 minute jam. That thing just breezes by like a fucking brisk walk through a, through a fucking grocery store. It is just an incredible tune to close the album out on. But everything before that, I mean, it's just tight dance track after tight dance track with some longer drawn out ideas that are encapsulating packed in that runtime that just blew me away the more i've listened to it i've kind of been enjoying keeping it at an eight um that might change as the year goes on but it's definitely an album that hit me hard the first listen and kept me around throughout repeated listens, just kept me grooving, kept me driving. There's some really good cuts on here, and I was wholly impressed with this. <clears throat> Given I don't know this producer's other projects or background, <clears throat> this was a welcome introduction to his catalog. <laughs> Most Blood, Emo Brits, uh, doing the Emo Brit thing. I got into them through their album Blush that came out a couple years ago, and I was impressed by it. I thought it was very nice, a lot of mid-tempo, uh, sort of pop-punk, very emo sounding cuts. And I was hoping they would change it a little bit on a follow-up, kind of grow a little bit, kind of expand a little bit. And they do to some regards. There's some cuts that throw a little more of a shoegazy influence in there on the tail end that I think are a welcome introduction. But I think those newer ideas are kind of few and far between. Like when the climax of the song Promise Me hit me, I immediately wanted so much more of the record to sound like that. Well, it kind of teased this more somber, shoegazy atmosphere, doused in some of those uh, drum lines and having a more open atmosphere. I was fucking floored when that hit and I wanted so much more of that because songs like Just Outside You Left in the Worst Way and even Can We Stay Like This sound like stuff that was on Blush which isn't a bad thing if it ain't broke don't fix it but when that hit I immediately liked a lot of the record less because they showcased that they could do a lot more with their sound and they teased a lot more uh, possibilities and it was it was really upsetting and I want I wanted more um, I was a little underwhelmed with this project. I think it's good. I think some of the lyrical ideas are as intimate as they were on Blush. <clears throat> but I think the overall soundscape, when it's not being fresh, is a little stale. Um, I don't think it's bad by any regards, but I do think it's it's something that I was hoping to see expand up, expanded upon a little more on this album. That when it wasn't and some of the songs kind of started to blur together, I was a little disappointed. Um... I still have hope for these guys, or I still, I still think these guys have it in them to make more consistently good music, but I do think that this is just an okay album. Um, I think that it's a little middle of the road. I gave it like a 6 out of 10. It was, it was a good time, and, it, and one of those newer influences kind of shown themselves. It was a great time, but I wanted more of that. fucking thunk Jack White would actually do something different. Uh, Boarding House Reach, the third solo album from <clears throat> Jack White, um, shocked me. It, it genuinely shocked me. I, I, I know a lot of people were kind of underwhelmed or kind of sh taken aback in a negative way to a lot of these newer ideas and, and uh, soundscape changes like the electronic percussion. I thought it was interesting. I was willing to, willing to give it a chance. 
And I think they paid off for him. I think he's paying homage to different influences, you know, and I like it. It's kind of Beckish and David Burnish at some points. And I even think it, get, it dabbles a little bit in the Mars Volta a little bit, kind of those Texan at the drive-in cats, something that they would throw together. Tracks like Hypermissophoniac, the way that that kind of has that whirring, jarring electronics, like, fade throughout the entire track. Rang to me is something that the Mars Volta would throw together. Some of the really interesting hip hop seeming influences kind of reminded me of what like Black Rock was doing, but a little bit better if you ask me. I think that there's a lot of cool ideas that when Jack White's not being Jack White, like on Connected by Love, over and over to some degree, because over and over kind of read to me as him expanding upon his uh, James Bond theme influence, because remember when that was a thing? Jack's just pulling from so many different places on here conceptually, and I think they fit more often than not. And actually this album has warmed up to me incredibly since at first listen. My first couple of listens, I was just kind of digesting the whole thing, but every repeated listen has just warranted more and more praise for a lot of those intricacies, a lot of those really abstract ideas that I wasn't expecting from Jack White, but are loving seeing done to this caliber. I get why people aren't into it as much as um, some people are, but I will say I'm in the camp that's continuing to enjoy this thing more and more the more and I listen to it. In fact, not only do I have this at a high rating, I lowered the rating on his last record because this is just so much better. Like, as a guy who, who came of age listening to The White Stripes, who fucking loves The White Stripes, this is a great stepping point or an expansion point on what Jack White could do. Right now, I have this thing in an 8 out of 10. It's, it's, it's probably my album of the month. I didn't say it at the beginning, but it's it's it was either this or Against All Logic, and I'm saying this is my album of the month. It's probably the best thing I've heard this month because it's continuing to grow on me. I could see this thing score climbing a little bit higher as the year goes on, but I'm happy with it at an eight. I'm still enjoying it. There's still some things I don't really like. When the song comes on, when I hear them say everything stops. After listening to the newest Jack White album, it got me interested to see what the fuck David Byrne was going to be doing in 2018. And lo and behold, he was making a pretty damn good record himself. While not as experimental as the latest Jack White, American Utopia actually has David Byrne almost being a little reflective. A lot of the soundscapes on this thing reminded me of late Talking Heads work, but not in a bad way. Not that I hate late Talking Heads, but this is a nice expansion on some of the ideas explored sonically in Naked. Uh, some of this very organic sounding dance atmospheres with a touch of electronic thrown in on some cuts. This was a, a really fun experience that had David Byrne not only having his um, very eccentric style of writing continue to grow and expand upon in his age, it showed that he still had a lot of that vigor that he had when he was younger. The track Every Day is a Miracle kind of reminded me of like an expansion on Nothing But Flowers in a, in a very direct way um, that sounded a little derivative of its initial style. Um, and it's not horrible, but there were points like that where they felt less expansive and more derivative. I do think David Byrne, outside of a few cuts, doesn't sound like he's aged a day, which is miraculous. Um, I love that it's still witty, it's still charming, and his sound still holds a place in music in 2018. I love this thing. I think David Byrne is still just a master in his craft, and I give this thing like a 7 out of 10. While there are moments that don't sound like fine wine, more often than not, this thing just sounds like aged in a barrel gold. So I didn't get into Of Montreal that deep like everybody else did. I did a deep dive on their album that came out before this and I thought it was alright. That was pretty good. I think this album is more interesting to a degree in some aspects, but I also think in some instances it's lesser because of it. The vocal silence in the album, I don't remember being this cringy on the previous record, um, but I do like the con concept of the album. I like the songwriting concept, and I love the dance atmosphere and composition of these songs. I like this thing more often than not decides to be influenced by, by dance music more than like indie rock and indie music. Um, I think that the synth choices they use are interesting. 
I feel like if another band were to try this, wouldn't execute them as well as this band does. I will say, I don't know if repeated listens are going to warrant much um, new appraisal for this thing. I think this is one of those albums that I'm going to listen to, be really happy with it, and then maybe revisit it as the year goes on in small bursts. I think it's a little elongated at points. Some of those split song concepts don't fully realize, I feel like. I feel like they, they kind of develop and then just kind of sputter off. They don't do anything with them. Um, and it leaves the song feeling a little disjointed. But when it works, I feel like this album works really, really well. I give, I give it like a 7 out of 10 as well. Um, on the lower end, I could see myself lowering this score to a 6 if as the year goes on, but we'll see where I stand right now is a 7. <laughs> Never listened to the Wombats before. Saw people talking about this. Figured I'd throw my hat in the ring. I think this record's okay. It's got some really catchy moments, but I kind of felt like I wanted more from this thing the more that I listened to it. I like the catchiness. I like some of the lyrical topics. I like some of the, the wit in the lyrics, but it leaves me wanting more. I just like Cheetah Chan and Lemon to a Knife Fight, and I Only Wear Black or My Shit. Lethal combinations are alright, but tracks like Ice Cream I'm not jiving with. I wanted so much more. I felt like these guys were going to be a little more eccentric. I felt these, like these guys were going to be a little more uh, self-aware. I don't know why, but when I listen to this thing, I am always wanting a little more. I also think this album, like this video was initially, kind of floundering out at the end. This didn't feel like it had a good finality to it. I think the soundscape they work with is great. It's that great balance of catchy pop rock sounding with some really good indie crunch again that songwriting has the same thing but god damn it if i just wanted to to make this thing feel like beautiful people will ruin my life i didn't walk away from this thing feeling like, give it like a six out of ten it was a good time sorry i kind of floundered on those last two i hope you guys enjoyed this month's listening log update again if you have any suggestions feel free to give them send them my way on any platform let me know what you're thinking of these updates. I'm going to go. I've been Viral Rack. You guys have good day, situations. And I'll see you another day.